Hi guys, this is fd 4 tv once more back with another video and today we are going to jump into one of the ISO 2022 compliant cryptocurrencies and which one is that? Yes, it's going to be XRP, Ripple XRP or XRP Ripple. So what is it? Does it deserve to have that moniker or that kite mark ISO 2022? We'll find out. But what I'm going to share with you in this video is not financial advice. If you require financial advice, guys, you know what to do. Please approach someone who is trying to give you financial advice and this is your first time stopping by thank you very much and whilst you're here please consider subscribing to our channel so we can spread the word to a wider audience and you never know we may keep bringing you more information and more educational information on your favorite cryptocurrency in this case it's xrp so launched in 2012 xrp is one of the industry's pioneering cryptocurrencies inspired by bitcoin it also uses a public ledger named xrp ledger to process transactions and events on the network love it or love it. XRP is one of the very few cryptocurrencies with actual real-world use cases that are already being delivered. In addition, XRP and Ripple are also part of a handful of cryptocurrencies to claim to meet the new electronic data interchange in accordance with ISO 2022. With XRP, you have the ledger, also known as the XRP ledger or XRPL, which is an open source, permissionless and decentralized cryptographic ledger powered by a peer-to-peer -peer network of open nodes. There is also the currency part that is is XRP, which is the native token. These two components form what is commonly known as XRP broadly. The XRP native token is a bridge currency for financial institutions exchanging value between multiple fiat currencies. And unlike Bitcoin or Ethereum, the XRPL or the XRP ledger uses a unique federated consensus mechanism as its method of validating transactions. Transactions are confirmed on the XRP ledger through the federated consensus mechanism in which the designated independent service as called validators come to an agreement on the order and outcome of XRP transactions. So what is the difference between XRP, XRP Ledger, Ripple and Ripple Network? That might be confusing. Here's a quick overview. XRP is the native token and the ticker symbol for the XRP Ledger. XRP Ledger, on the other hand, is a distributed consensus ledger, while Ripple, formerly known as Ripple Labs, is the company behind Ripple Network. And finally, Ripple Network is a global network payment built on top of the XRP Ledger. I hope you get that, but it's right here on the screen for your reference. Now, onto XRP's value proposition. It offers low-cost transactions in the region of a fraction of a cent. It is exceptionally fast with transactions settling at 3 to 5 seconds, and scalability is reportedly in the region of 1,500 transactions per second. XRP also claims to be carbon neutral as well as energy efficient. It is an open source and is maintained by the community. It also boasts a proven reliability, having delivered consistent performance over the past 8 years or so. Here are some of the key features for XRP. XRP is a high-performance decentralized P2P multi-currency exchange built directly into the blockchain. It atomically settles with multi-hope payments or cross-border payments. XRP provides budget micropayments with unlimited speed secured by XRP. Flexible options for custody and security of ledger accounts are also available, as well as the ability to tokenize other currencies in the form of IOUs. The XRP ledger allows for smart contracts via what's known as hooks. Deployed in 2012, the XRP ledger supports enterprises in Python, Java and JavaScript, and JavaScript developers with powerful utility and flexibility. Now, let's have a look at some of the use cases for XRP. Well, we touched on the most common use case, which is cross-border payments, micro payments for use in gaming, content, and web monetization, among plenty others. The XRP ledger can also be used to create digital wallets to store public and private keys. It is also possible to use the XRP ledger technology to build sophisticated exchanges. Financial institutions can also issue stable coins on the XRP ledger. The XRP ledger's integrated decentralized exchange or DEX allows neutral counterparty free digital assets to be seamlessly exchanged to and from issued assets including stable coins. XRP ledger also allows the issuance of IOUs which can represent a currency of any value and can be extended to the issuance of non-fungible tokens. Decentralized finance or DeFi on the XRP ledger provides access to financial products and services online in a decentralized and borderless manner on XRP Ledger, with decentralized smart contract protocols replacing the traditional role of financial institutions. That is quite an important. CBDCs created on the XRP's private ledger provide central banks with a secure, controlled, and flexible solution to issue and manage central bank-issued currencies, or CBDCs. Now, as part of our evaluation of XRP, we are going to apply our 13 elements, and those 13 
elements are as follows. We have decentralization, security, scalability, interoperability, the project team, use cases, social media presence via Twitter as well as via Discord before we jump into the project's tokenomics. So starting with decentralization, XRP's blockchain operates a little differently than most other cryptos. With other cryptocurrencies such as Ethereum, transactions are secure as the majority of ledger holders must agree with verification for them to be added. XRP's Ripple network somewhat centralized things. While anyone can download its validation software, it maintains what it calls unique nodes list that users can select to verify their transaction based on which participants they think are least likely to defraud them. Its default list currently contains 35 trusted validators. Ripple decides which validators to approve for this list and also makes up six of these validation nodes. However, users can opt out of this default list and hypothetically remove Ripple back validators from their transactions entirely, instead constructing their own list of trusted validators. This would allow the network to continue to approve transactions even without Ripple the company remaining involved or even continuing to exist. So that could be critical and that could be a good thing as well. Ripple also has a full-time development team that manages the roadmap and performs most of the protocol's development. So you can tell it's quite loaded under decentralization for XRP. As far as security is concerned, the XRP ledger is not vulnerable to a 51% attack because it does not use mining in its consensus mechanism. It is vulnerable to similar attacks, however. This will take the form of running a large number of validators, then convincing others to trust those validators. This sort of attack is theoretically possible, but will be very difficult to carry out because human intervention is necessary for the validators to become trusted. Other servers or validators only listen to the validators they are configured to trust, either through a validator list or an explicit configuration. By default, XRP Ledger servers are configured to use a validator list site run by Ripple. From an investment point of view, the ongoing case by the SEC versus Ripple makes owning SRP a highly risk proposition. Granted, Ripple and XRP could win their case and be classified as a non-security, but there is also the chance, however remote it is, that XRP, the native token, could be classified as a security, which could hamper the price action for the XRP token, as has been the case for the past few years. I believe this could be temporary, by the way. Ripple was awarded SOC2 or the System and Organization Controls for Service Organizations, which is a standard which satisfies that a technical system is designed and operated according to principles which support data privacy and security, which means XRP might not have issues if it wants to integrate with things like the European financial infrastructure or the American infrastructure. Why? Because it's already designed to meet certain criteria and is designed to certain standards, which is, if that's what you're looking for, that's going to be good for XRP and Ripple. While there is no evidence available publicly indicating that the XRP ledger is undergoing external tests to give it a clean bill of health, Ripple maintains a live bug bounty program to identify bugs within its software program. As far as scalability is concerned, transaction finality is within 3 to 5 seconds, while XRP ledger can process up to 1,500 transactions per second. Now, on to interoperability. At this moment in time, the XRP ledger is not interoperable with other blockchains. There is, however, an XRP bridge. This is the only bridge supporting XRP transfers between Ripple and heterogeneous chains, such as BNB, Clayton, Polygon, and so forth. Let us know if you have used this bridge and whether it is user-friendly. I have not tried it myself, but if you have, let us know in the comment section what was your user experience. Now, onto the project team. According to LinkedIn, there are approximately 952 team members, obviously, because Ripple is such it's a massive entity. Social media presence, there are 2.6 million Twitter followers. As far as Discord is concerned, we came across 24,200 Discord members from two non-official Discord groups who came across across uh, when we did our search. I don't believe Ripple themselves have an official Discord group or server. So we'll go with that 20,200 Discord members from those unofficial sources or groups. Now on to tokenomics. Ticker symbol XRP, token supply 100 billion, circulating supply 50 billion or 50.8%. Token distribution 20% or 20 billion was allocated to the founders, 77.8 was allocated to Ripple, the entity behind XRP, and 0.2% was airdrop due launch. So insider token allocation, according to our own calculation, is sitting at 99.8%, mm, which again confirms this is a strictly, strictly centralized project. But having said that, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? If that's what you wish, and the fact that a Ripple and XRP are forming partnerships and integrations and collaborations with legacy finance infrastructure, central banks and other banks, that's got to be good because banks have to try
trust a protocol for them to do business with. Without that element of trust, they might not be XRP as we know it today. So maybe, just maybe, this setup works and works for XRP and it's ideal for what they are trying to achieve. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section. Each to their own, right? Anyway, so as part of our D1 our risk evaluation as always, we are going to apply 13 elements and those 13 elements are as follows. We've got decentralization, security, scaling, interoperability, project team, social media via Twitter, social media via Discord, edge of the project, use cases, tokens issued at project launch, tokens in circulation at the point at which we are recording this video, maximum tokens available, as well as inside a token allocation. We then score these elements between 0 and 10. Once we have scored them, we aggregate these scores, come up with the total, and it is that total that we classify under the following risk categories. Mind you, the whole point of this exercise is to assess the risk involved in making an investment in XRP or any other crypto project that is in front of you. Do you own research? This is our own way and method of trying to assess risk. So the four risk categories are as follows. Highest risk, we call that the no-go category, a project will left scored 0 to 64 out of 130. Next level up, less risk than the bottom one, a project will have scored 65 to 89 points out of 130 and we call that could go to zero category. The next one up, we call that potential, a project will have scored 90 to 109 points out of 130. Before we go to the least risk category, which we call the go for it category, here a project will have scored 110 to 130 out of 130. So here are the scores we've allocated to XRP. Decentralization, 2.5 points. Security, 5 points out of 10. Scaling, 7.5 points out of 10. Interoperability, 5 points out of 10. Project team, 10 out of 10. Social media via Twitter, 7.5 points. Social media via Discord, 5 points. Age of the project, it's one of the pioneers of this space, 10 points out of 10. Use cases, SRP has got use cases in bucket loads. We're going to give them 10 points out of 10. Tokens issued at project launch, 5 points. Tokens in circulation at the point at which we're doing this video, 5 points. Maximum tokens are available, 0 because it's sitting at 100 billion, I think. Inside the token allocation, again, is 99.8%. Our threshold is set at 30%. So again, 0 points out of 10. Based on that assessment, do you guys agree with our scores? Let us know in the comment section. So these scores give us a mega total of 72.5 points out of 130, which puts XRP within the could go to zero category. Now, most of the decent projects we have evaluated on this channel, they've fallen within this category. Why? Because majority of projects we have within the crypto space could go to zero at any point. They might last a year or two, but without reinvention and reconfiguration, projects die. It doesn't mean a project in the top 10 today will remain in the top 10 forever. Project die. Look at the original list from CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap and then assess it over the years. You will see what I'm talking about. So as far as you are concerned, XRP could go to zero. Yes, just like your Ethereum, your Polkadot, your Cosmos, they could all go to zero. Do you guys agree with the scores and classification that we have allocated to XRP? Let us know in the comment section, guys. As far as you are concerned, there's nothing wrong with the approach Ripple and XRP have taken, each to their own. For the partnerships and collaborations, integrations they've had, they've had to do exactly what they are doing. Having said that, there's the other side that is starting to come up that is fully decentralized. There is a decentralized bridge, and I also believe that there are some DEXs coming through on, on XRP Ledger. If you know any better, guys, let us know in the comment section. We'll be happy to do another video highlighting some of the decentralized protocols and dApps that are coming through from XRP. Until next time, guys, this was your review of XRP using our DYO our risk evaluation as part of our ISO 2022 series, where we review projects that are claimed to meet the ISO 2022 standards. Until next time, this is your host, FD4C5.tv, signing out for now. Bye.